hello everybody. So nice to see so many people uh, that have come here. Thank you for coming. Uh, so uh, my name is Kalev Lember and, uh, and uh, I'm mostly known in uh, GNOME circles for uh, working uh, on uh, GNOME software, the app installer and, uh, and also for being the, the GNOME packager in Fedora land. And uh, for a while now, I have been, uh, I have been uh, trying to help along a project uh, in the Fedora land uh, that, uh, that's called the Atomic Workstation. So uh, let's see if the presentation here works. Oh, excellent. I can even switch slides. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so what is Fedora Atomic Workstation? Um, it's, um, so for a, for a long, long while, Pretty much all Linux distributions have been uh, put together based on packages, and uh, that's uh, that's that has served us really well so far. But uh, but the system also has a number of uh, disadvantages, and uh, one of the disadvantages is that uh, updating is really complex. Uh, for example, um, on a package-based system, uh, if you do online updates. Then there's always the issue that uh, that uh, apps might uh, running apps don't get shut down properly. So if you update something on the background and then uh, continue using an app, then it might crash or not find its data or something. And uh, offline updates are also uh, kind of problematic. We we have been doing uh, offline updates in uh, in uh, Fedora for I don't know five six releases even maybe more. And uh, while offline updates solve those problems with online updates, they introduce their own set of problems. Namely, uh, the, namely they are just uh, slow and uh, it takes a while, like you reboot your computer and then it just starts in installing updates. Uh, if anyone has used Windows, uh, it's pretty much the same there. You just uh, reboot and then it starts uh, installing updates and sometimes uh, the computer is down for like half an hour because it's installing something and you have no control over it. So, uh, so, uh, so what we are trying to do here is solve that problem by uh, doing updates atomically so that we can uh, download updates uh, online. So while the user is logged on, in the we download updates in the background and then, the, uh, and then, uh, and then uh, when the user reboots, then we atomically boot into the new system. And that should hopefully uh, make the, the update experience much, much nicer. So, uh, so the technology, how we are doing that is, uh, is called uh, RPM OS3. And um, let's see if I have a new slide here. So RPM OS3 is, um, is, uh, is this technology that uh, uh, that is based on OS3, uh, and the OS3 is, is the same thing that's used in Flatpak. So OS3 is basically uh, like a file, like a Git-like file system for whole operating uh, system trees. And um, what what RPM OS3 does is that it uh, it makes it possible to compose OS3 uh, file systems based on RPM packages. And since we use RPM in Fedora, that's exactly uh, where we want to use it. So, uh, <coughs> but uh, all this is very nice, uh, but uh, one piece of the puzzle is still missing, it's uh, apps. If we can, uh, if the, if the so if, if we start doing, doing the base operating system, uh, uh, If we start using uh, using uh, OS3 for the base operating system, then we quickly run into the problem that the user can download an operating system, but uh, but where do the apps come from? Because and because it's just basically just one image. So uh, and uh, our plan is to use uh, Flatpak for apps, so so that uh, we would have a, a largely read-only base operating system based on RPM OS3 and then flatback applications on top of it. And, uh, and uh, hopefully uh, this should result in a much nicer user experience because, um, 
because one of the, the downsides of the packaging system that we have been, that all the Linux distributions have been using, is that uh, the exact app versions that, uh, that the user can install are, are basically dictated by the, di by, the, um, by the distribution. Like for example, um, for example, someone who is using an, uh, a RHEL, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, uh, then uh, the app updates uh, tend to be very cons conservative there. So you are basically locked into the old Firefox or okay, Firefox is updated, but like old uh, GIMP, for example, that basically never gets updated. So, uh, so the idea of separating base OS and uh, and apps is uh, is so that uh, we can have a rock rock solid base operating system and uh, apps that are much much newer. So, if you can imagine a rock solid uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux seven base and then uh, then uh, flatback with all the flatbacks with all the latest updates for apps. That's, uh, I think that could be a winning uh, combination here. So, um, <coughs> so what we have been doing so far is that um, we, have, uh, we have RPM OS3 support in GNOME software. And this is a screenshot from, uh, from, an, uh, from a GNOME software that's running uh, running uh, on Fedora Atomic Workstation. And uh, for people who have been using GNOME software, it, it doesn't look anything special. And that's the whole idea. It, the updates, uh, updates are, are just working there. You can install updates uh, on uh, latest raw height. So uh, pretty on this screenshot, uh, compared to, uh, to a regular Fedora installation, the only pretty much the only difference is that there's a small version number that uh, denotes the whole base operating system version. But otherwise it just looks like a normal uh, GNOME software update screenshot. And, and that's exactly the goal we just want to, uh, we are trying to bring uh, Atomic Workstation uh, up to par with, uh, with the regular Fedora installation. Yeah, and uh, one more update screenshot here. <laughs> so mm, so uh, I've been talking about the RPM OS3. Uh, so RPM OS3 is actually two different things. First, uh, first is the server side component, which is basically it takes uh, existing RPMs that are produced uh, continuously in Fedora and makes an OS3 uh, OS3 uh, file system out of it. And uh, this this uh, this makes it possible to to basically just generate OS3 based images fr out of regular Fedora RPMs. Which makes so so that we can we don't have to build everything from scratch. And uh, and on the client side, the RPM OS3 is basically a package manager that can use uh, two different kinds of sources. One of them is uh, is then the OS3 image, and it uh, can also layer RPMs on top of it. And uh, layering RPMs is uh, is uh, is uh, super important here because uh, without that uh, the base operating system would basically be read only. But if we can layer RPMs on top of the existing tree, that gives us, uh, that gives uh, people who want to uh, hack on their own system, who want to change something, who want to install, let's say, I don't know, codex, extra codex, that gives them the opportunity to do so. So, uh, so hopefully we have hit a good balance here with uh, hackability and also and also, and also making it uh, making it very stable and uh, and uh, useful for end users who don't care about such things. We'll see. I guess uh, I guess we'll find out if people are interested in uh, in it uh, when we start actually uh, offering it to end users. So I have some screenshots here from the RPM OS3 command line. It's just yeah, this is from the. It has options from the for the server side to compose trees, and also for the client side to upgrade and, uh, and uh, rebase and such things. And uh, one interesting thing with the RPM OS3 is that it always keeps uh, the previous pre-upgrade state around. So if you do an upgrade, 
if you do an upgrade and then reboot into the new system, the previous system is also actually kept around. Which means that it's super easy to do rollbacks if something goes wrong. Like, for example, the new system is buggy, then you just reboot and uh, boot back into the old system. And uh, yeah, this is a RPM OS3 command line uh, screenshot where it just says, shows two different, two different uh, trees that are available. I think I had a screenshot somewhere where it was possible. Oh yeah, here it is, yeah. Yeah, so this is a crop screenshot where you can just choose between two uh, RPM OS3 versions. So yeah, so I, I did an upgrade from uh, 27.15 to 27.59. And, uh, and if I don't like it, I can always choose the older one when booting and, uh, and go back. W one of the problems we've had, uh, so I have, a, I have, a, I have been, uh, been working on Fedora for a while and packaging and, uh, and, uh, and uh, handling uh, Paxilla issues with, uh, with uh, GNOME packages. And, and um, one thing that we often run into is that um, users, uh, that, that is often difficult to reproduce problems that users have. So when a conventional package manager, when, when you install something with a conventional package manager and update, the package manager is basically all the time trying to solve a set of constraints so that, uh, for example, let's say Firefox depends uh, on a library, but it doesn't specify which version. And uh, depending on the circumstances, circumstances, the package manager can solve the uh, solve the dependency differently. Sometimes it, the dependency can be newer, sometimes older, and uh, that makes it difficult for for me as a developer to repro reproduce the problems that users have because I always have to like ask uh, what version of this library you have and that and it's super difficult. But, uh, but the OS3 makes it so much simpler. The, the thing is that um, OS3 uh, trees are always uh, identified by a hash. So if, we if someone, has a, someone has a specific OS3 update installed, it's always in identified by a by a hash that covers the whole tree. And if someone else wants to reproduce the exact same, uh, exact same set of packages, then they just install the same hash and, uh, and, and you can super easily reproduce the exact <coughs> same uh, operating system. Yeah, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the advantage that uh, it's possible to, to actually use separate channels for, uh, for the base OS and app updates, I think this is going to be a, a very important thing in Fedora land because f in Fedora and Red Hat Enterprise Linux land because, uh, because that basically enables us to, uh, to tap into so much bigger ecosystems of, uh, of, uh, of uh, applications that uh, we hope will be available as flatpacks. So, so, so you can have a stable base OS and then uh, install latest apps and, uh, or whatever you choose. You can, or, or install uh, an older app or it basically enables those possibilities. Because so far, so far it was impossible to install much different versions of apps without flat, flatback because they were linked against the base OS uh, Images, but uh, but with Flatpak, uh, we can easily take uh, take a runtime from a newer Linux distribution and use that instead, and uh, and uh, use that to run apps. So, so one problem with Flatpak that uh, Alex in his talk uh, mentioned earlier was that um, oh one problem and also one uh, advantage is that uh, Flatpak is uh, inherently decentralized. And, and like Alex said, it's, uh, it's a great thing because, and great thing and, and exactly what we need because uh, that means that um, app developers can create flat packs themselves. They don't have to rely on distribu distributions. But it's also a, a, a bad thing because uh, that means that if you want to install something, you have to Google for a flat pack or try to copy paste a link from somewhere. 
And uh, we are trying to solve that problem uh, in the Fedora land uh, by trying to uh, generate uh, flatbacks automatically for, from RPMs. So we have a, an ongoing project that's uh, led by Owen Taylor, uh, is, to, um, is, to, uh, is to pretty much take, uh, take uh, all existing applications that, uh, that are packaged for, from, for Fedora and uh, build uh, flatbacks out of them uh, and also create a Fedora runtime. And uh, why we are doing this uh, is that uh, is because um, is because uh, the flatback uh, ecosystem is uh, is right now is very small. We have GNOME apps packaged for this, but that's pretty much it. There's GNOME and and nothing else. There's GNOME and LibreOffice and maybe some KDE apps, but uh, but uh, there's so much more available as uh, RPMs on Fedora now. So uh, so uh, what 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 we would like to do is is try try to uh, quickly seed the available flatbacks uh, so that we just can just grow the collection and uh, and also this solves the if we do it centralized in fedora land this solves the problem of uh, discoverability because uh, because if we have a, like a central repository with all flatbacks that means we can list easily list them in gnome software and uh, and everybody can uh, can install them uh, by just searching in GNOME software instead of having to uh, to go to uh, Google or whatever. And um, so, so uh, yeah, and and uh, once we we have done that, that means that uh, we have w once we have this uh, integration going, that means that uh, that. Uh, uh, we are going to be producing uh, flatbacks with uh, latest app, app updates uh, continuously, which means that uh, people with the older installations or Red Hat Enterprise Linux can uh, can just quickly get their flatback uh, with latest software easily. Yeah, and some more screenshots from my Atomic installation where there's a bunch of flatbacks installed. And So, um, so we just released uh, Fedora 26, but uh, Fedora 27 isn't actually uh, very far away. We had a bit of uh, scheduling issues, and Fedora 26 was uh, much, much later than we originally thought. So uh, I'm, I don't remember the Fedora 27 schedule off, and but I think it's like maybe three months away. So it's very, very soon. So we don't have that much time to. Comp that much time anymore for Fedora 27. So what we are planning to uh, to accomplish by then is that um, is that we have uh, ISO images uh, with Fedora Atomic Workstation that everybody can install and try out. This is actually done, but there's uh, there's some issues with Anaconda installer that we still need to solve. It's not as easy as uh, as it could be. Then, then uh, in addition to that, we, we want to have a GNOME software, which is the default uh, app center in Fedora to, um, to be able to install updates. And both the RPM OS3 updates and flatback updates. And uh, this is also uh, largely done. Then uh, one, one thing that I want to work on, but I haven't started yet, is to uh, is to uh, is to have a user interface in uh, GNOME software that makes it possible to revert back to a pre-upgrade state, so that yeah, you know, basically the same thing that I showed earlier with the crop menu, but uh, but just uh, bring it to GNOME software to uh, to make it to make it more user accessible. And uh, and uh, and uh, and. Uh, then we also want to bring, uh, bring uh, also make sh also want to make sure that the overlaying RPMs uh, works uh, through GNOME software so that we can install codecs and uh, and whatever uh, whatever is needed to to add on top of the base system. But uh, one thing that we are not planning on uh, doing for the for Fedora 27 is uh, is making it a top level product for uh, Fedora because uh, it will still going to be 
uh, just for uh, people who are, who are interested in trying this out, but, uh, but uh, I don't think it's going to be ready for the white public. But for Fedora 28, we will hopefully be able to, uh, to refine this much more and uh, hopefully get uh, flatbacks uh, produced in Kochi and hopefully we can get uh, GNOME software switched over so that uh, we can uh, so that it can install uh, flatbacks installed instead of RPMs by default and also advertise it on uh, get.fedoraproject.org Yeah, and uh, that was my talk. Thank you for listening and uh, you can find more information there. Any questions? Uh, Okay, Sri is going to pick uh, some people. There were so many Where hands here. Right, here hey, it's working. Um, so many of the things that uh, you're doing for the Atomic Project um, are kind of the same challenges we have at Endless with you know the OS3 base and everything, and also the uh, uh, you know doing your own runtime because there is uh, and and doing these uh, packages into flat packs uh, which we also did from from Debian because there were not enough, but we're now in the process of trying to get away from that and um, and trying to bet on on FlatHub as the as a way to kind of centralize uh, official if you will uh, things. So I, I wonder, like you said that. Uh, yeah, uh, people will not have everything on Flatpak yet, uh, and you're gonna build that to solve that problem. But uh, is it also the idea that you will move into FlatHub, uh, or you always want to have that because you always, you always will have the the packages for RHEL, and thus there is no point in. You know, I want to know where where is the investment going into. <laughs> so uh, I really don't know the answer to the question. I'm sorry. Uh, I guess time will only tell uh, if we get there. So, um, from a political perspective, in like Fedora polit politics, it's um, much easier to. So we are we are just exploring new ground here, and um, and pretty much all Fedora people are packagers, and they are used to be able to control stuff, and uh, and. Um, uh, but we, we, we are actually trying to move away from there so that to make it possible for app developers to produce their own flatbacks and to move away from uh, RPM packaging so that uh, there wouldn't be like a middleman. But uh, and th what I described here is actually like a middle step here. So we would like to get there. Uh, and uh, But to, to get there, we first need to make a flatback a first class citizen in Fedora. And, uh, and having uh, flatbacks produced in Kochi is, uh, seems like the... Uh, pretty much the only sane step we can do to, uh, to get closer there. So, uh, so yes, hopefully, uh, hopefully we can switch to FlatHub uh, at some point or add it in addition, but, but uh, I'm not sure we can do it uh, very soon. Mm. What, did, what did the spec tech, um behavior about the current way of uh, packaging with RPM, the, the guideline policies, etc., and the migration to flat pack is some kind of automatic uh, scripted thing, uh, a procedure in which uh, you start doing uh, RPM spec and finally transform or extend in some way to, to flat pack. So uh, Owen has been working on it, and uh, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, and uh, he would know all the details. But uh, the basic idea is that uh, is that we take all packages that have desktop files. These are these are all these are like leaf packages that are considered applications in the GNOME software sense, like graphical applications. So we take all of them and uh, and uh, and try to and try to rebuild RPMs based on the spec files with just a different prefix to uh, slash app. And then, uh, and then Kochi would automatically put them in not, in a, not in an RPM uh, format, but in flatback then. So, so it hopefully should be uh, largely uh, transparent for packages and uh, hopefully we can make it automatic as well. 
So when doing packages, RPM spec will still be first class citizen or? Yes. Uh -huh, okay. Yes. Um, and the, the, the last question. I know uh, well, I, I package in Fedora a couple of things. I know guidelines are strict because reasons. No, no problem. But when when putting in in the store, you you are, you are referring that we try to um, to remove the the middleman to more fast uh, packaging, more fast reaction, etc. So for this third party or or upstream flat packs we expect or you expect to uh, uh, to to uh, mm, complete uh, uh, comply all the uh, the guidelines for example in fedora so initially we are planning on just making uh, just using uh, rpms that are rebuilt into flat packs but uh, but the end game here is is to uh, is to actually move the flatbacks upstream and uh, but we, we haven't figured out how to make them discoverable and we haven't figured out uh, out a plan how to how to how to start uh, phasing out uh, rpms uh, wh where they are not needed so this is something that needs work uh, we haven't figured out the details here Okay, I have a question that's nothing to do with flat packs. Um, w with RPM OS tree or OS tree gen generally, what's the benefit over, let's say, doing package installation of any kind on a snapshot aware file system like ButterFS now, BcacheFS, or XFS in the future? Uh, one of the advantages is that we can uh, we can. Um Compose those trees on the server side and test them, and then then release them to to uh, to users. Uh, so hopefully there's a, like an additional step on the server side that makes them where we can run tests on the produced images. Um, and and uh, and 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 it's it's also the 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 thing that that uh, it's, uh, it's much easier to, to test a certain set of packages that we know that go into the base OS as opposed to installing random RPMs on the client side. So we are hoping we can, we can like reduce the, the size of the base OS to make it like really testable to so that we can like cover it with tests and uh, make sure that, uh, that it actually works when we release an update. So, so, so maybe there's one update to the base OS every two weeks or so and and th th then that's uh, that's like a what has been accumulated during those two weeks instead of like releasing one rpm one day and another day uh, rpm on on another day and then just making exploding the testing matrix there and 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 also and and uh, and uh, an another advantage is that um, if we use a snapshotting file system uh, there's still the issue of uh, of downtime like uh, if we want to use offline updates on a snapshotting file system, we have to reboot to uh, reboot and and then install the updates mm -hmm. or, or, or reboot mm -hmm. snapshot, then install the updates and yeah. then boot into the new system. Not at all. You can we're we're doing the same in in OpenSUSE Cubic as you're doing with OS mm -hmm. Tree, but we're just doing it with RPM and BTRFS, mm -hmm. so we're not rebuilding all of our packages. Mm -hmm. So so so. Uh, what, 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 what I was thinking is, is that it, it, uh, it, it basically avoids the downtime uh, for package installation. We can prepare everything uh, and then just reboot into the new system, just uh, chasing one sim link, hopefully. Yep, that we do exactly the same. Oh, okay. But, but we do it without, yeah, just oh. using the bubble. I don't know. Maybe there is no advantage then. Maybe it's just a different. Uh, maybe maybe they are equally good then. I don't know. Okay, I think we're we're out of time. So, so thank you very much, everybody, for attending and. Uh <laughs>